I'll never forget a phone call. In fact, I can tell you where I was when it was happening. I, I had my phone on the dash on speakerphone. I was driving through the mountains just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. I was headed to Las Vegas for the competition of the World Championship of Public Speaking with Toastmasters, and I'd made it to the final 82 out of 35,000 contestants. It was time for the semifinals. But I was on the phone because it was the same week that I joined the John Maxwell team as a coach. And I answered a question that John Maxwell asked. I was one of the callers on the line. There were less than 100 of us at the time. John asked a question, and I answered it, and John Maxwell scolded me. And his answer was, don't you dare. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. When John replied to my answer to his question, his question was, so why did you join the John Maxwell team? What makes you want to be a part of this team? And my answer was, I feel like all my life I was supposed to be writing and speaking and traveling around the world and, and teaching people how to improve, improve the quality of their life. I've always felt like I was supposed to be the next James Dobson. And that's when John Maxwell replied and said, don't you dare. I was a little taken aback by it. Because in my mind, there was no separation between writing and speaking and, and doing those things to improve the lives of others and being a James Dobson, because I kind of saw him as the, the ideal person doing that. But what John was saying was to separate the idea of the functions of what James Dobson was doing from the person of who he was, what his assignment was, what his unique gifts and callings and experiences and insights, intuitions and relationships were. What John was saying was, don't you dare try to be James Dobson. The world already has one of those. And if you, by any remote chance, could succeed at being somebody else better, you still couldn't be as good at being them as they can be at being them. And by doing so, the world loses who you are. I want you to let that sink in for a minute. Because I know there are a lot of young people out there today and a lot of Men and women in a midlife crisis who are looking around right now going, I don't feel like I've accomplished what I was put here for. I have not made the mark in the world that I thought I was going to. I have not done everything that I wanted to do in my heart. I'm going to go back to school and become more like this. I'm going to learn this kind of program. I'm going to get this kind of education so I can be more like that person. It's one thing to have the ambition to say, I'm going to follow in the footsteps of a Bill Gates or a Steve Jobs or the creator of BlackBerry or, or Tesla or whatever. It's one thing to have that ambition and say, I like the way they've been innovators or I've liked, I like the way they've accomplished things. All those things are awesome. What's not awesome is to give your own uniqueness. I was in a classroom with students just this last week and in the classroom we were talking about how important hard work is. And one of the comments that came from the curriculum, and I didn't write this, it was someone else's, but it said, if you look around the room, you'll realize you're all just average. And the only thing that will separate you is hard work. Frankly, I disagree with that. I think there's something at which all of us in the world are average, but I also think that there's something that each of us individually can excel at. And the sooner we find that out, the better. John Maxwell says it this way, the two greatest days in the life of anyone are the day that they're born and the day they discover why. If you can figure out why you're here, what your purpose is, how your gifts, callings, assignments, intuitions, insights, experiences, and relationships, education, all roll into the why that you're, if you can figure that out, your uniqueness will shine. 
your ability to do something that no one else can do will be a powerful tool in the arsenal towards your success. I'll be close with this. I love the way Dr. Caroline Lee says it. She says, if you look around and other people are attempting to do what you're doing and you do it with such great ease that they all look at you and go, Ugh, I'm so frustrated. How did you do that? But honestly, deep inside or in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I thought everybody could do that. Take note. That's your gift. That's your uniqueness. That's what sets you apart. Lead with that uniqueness and look for it in those that you lead. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.